Hi, I'm Dr. John Green. I'm the director of the Cotty Writing Center, and I am joined today with Dr. Andrella Roy, Assistant Professor of International Relations, and we are excited to uh, do the premiere episode of Writing Across Cotty. So, a little bit about this project. Uh, the goal of this project is to interview faculty from across the disciplines here at Cotty and get their uh, opinions on why writing matters to their discipline, how writing is done in their discipline. And this is all in an effort to demonstrate that writing truly is done across the curriculum. We say that a lot, but a lot of people don't really know what that means. A lot of people don't really know uh, what form writing takes in the various academic disciplines. So that's the goal of this project, is to demonstrate for the Cotty community how exactly and why exactly writing is done across the curriculum. So thank you for being here for our pilot episode of Writing Across Cotty, and thank you, Dr. Roy, for thank joining Thank you very us. much. I'm excited to be a part of this project. Great. So let's start with a pretty open-ended question. What kind of writing is done in your discipline? Well, uh, in political science, uh, writing is everywhere. And uh, in uh, the academic sphere, if we pursue political science as an academic discipline, uh, writing is done in terms of research studies, uh, publishing your research in peer-reviewed journals or writing a book. That is the academic uh, format of how writing is done. However, political science does have an applied side to it. So political science graduates also go into journalism, they go into campaign, they go into nonprofit, and regardless of where they go, uh, what they have to do is to persuade and be it in oral communication or written communication through audios, visuals, they have to be able to communicate their ideas persuasively. So writing, if we perceive of writing in a very uh, broad sense, where it's not just written text, but it is different modes of communication, regardless of what you do with your political science degree. Uh, if you become a lawyer, if you become a journalist, if you are uh, working in the grassroots, you have to communicate yourself. And in that sense, writing is all pervasive in the discipline and not just confined to academic writing in terms of journal articles and uh, academic books. I see. And why do you think it's important to be able to write well in your discipline? Well, uh, political science as a discipline, uh, I think, is concerned with how power is distributed, who gets what, when, and how. So when we are talking about uh, American politics, public administration, public policy, international relations, the centrality of power and how it is, uh, how it is distributed matters a lot. And in discussing that, one needs to effectively communicate the argument as to who gets what, when, and how. And uh, since argument, arguments lie at the core of the discipline, I feel it is important to develop uh, strong arguments, to be able to persuade the audience with those arguments, and have that argument be backed up by evidence. So. Uh, when we are talking about power relations, when we are talking about uh, who are disadvantaged, who are advantaged in society or in the international system, there is a lot of arguments that we have to place to uh, make sense of what's going on around us, and uh, writing is the mode to communicate that. It's very interesting that you keep using these words like argument and persuasion and persuasiveness, because these are ideas that come up a lot when we talk about rhetoric, yes. uh, the art of rhetoric, the art of persuasion. We talk about that a lot in uh, the first year writing seminar class. We talk about it in Writing 102. And what I'm hearing from you is that that never stops being yes, relevant. Yes, that never stops being relevant. And I know as rhetoricians, you start with Plato and Aristotle, their rhetoric. and when uh, our political science majors at Cotty, we have international relations uh, bachelor degree, not political science, but international relations is a part of political science. And one of the courses that they take is political philosophy. And political philosophy, uh, starting from Plato to Marx, main political scholars, when we are looking at feminist scholars, uh, 
which forms the basis of uh, political philosophy, it's about discussing persuasive ideas, right? Ideas about human nature, ideas about how the world works, ideas about how we can bring about change to make the world a more uh, secure place or to address oppressions, to address structural violence. This is all about creating persuasive ideas that are backed up by evidence. Uh, so um, that way, persuasiveness in communication is very important. And much of political science, especially when we are looking at social movements, be it environmental justice, be it feminism, be it uh, movements for civil liberties. Uh, so off late, we talk a lot about Black Lives Matter. But that has a huge historical uh, lineage starting from uh, uh, the very first movements for uh, racial minorities to protect their rights. And all those are grounded in some form of activism. Mm -hmm. And activism, the success of any form of activism depends on how persuasive your arguments are. So uh, that way I consider political science mm -hmm. to be very much reliant on effective communication. And um, writing is a tool to achieve that goal. Yeah. A lot of overlap there. So getting a little more specific, what specific writing skills would you say are important for writing in international relations? Well, in re international relations, the first skill that I would emphasize on is critical thinking and being able to uh, demonstrate that critical thinking in uh, writing as well as in oral communication. So. Um, critically engaging with a text, with a documentary, with a speech, and then being able to effectively communicate your uh, critique of the, that material. So critical thinking is uh, foundational to the discipline. And once you have engaged critically with the material, what we uh, have uh, coming is uh, then problem solving, looking at what is not a desirable situation where we need to address uh, some uh, issues and uh, then solving the problem based on the critical thinking part that that precedes it. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking, problem solving, a lot of things that probably apply to multiple disciplines. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, in the humanities, in the social sciences, in the natural sciences, we are all trying to solve a problem. So, And public policy, which I also teach, uh, is goal-oriented and problem-oriented. So it's all about solving a problem. But you cannot solve a problem unless you start thinking critically mm -hmm. about what is in place about the status quo. So uh, all of that requires effective communication yeah. to be persuasive. So that's what uh, I think is fundamental to how we approach uh, international relations at Cardi. What has been the most important thing you've learned about writing in your discipline? Well, what I have learned uh, most important thing about writing in my discipline is to be able to uh, develop arguments. I keep coming back to the point uh, with uh, evidence, evidence-based arguments uh, where, uh, well, I went to a graduate program which was very much positivist in approach. It was very empirical. Uh, this is a program where we relied on be it quantitative or qualitative uh, evidence-based uh, political analysis. So definitely creating arguments that are backed up by evidence. To me, that is a skill of even when you are critically engaging with something or solving problems, regardless of what you do, that has to be backed up by credible evidence. And what kind of evidence would you be looking to use in international relations? What would be good evidence to back yourself up? So it depends on the kind of study that you are doing. So for instance, if I am engaging in a case study project, right, where I'm looking at a case and we are trying to analyze that case, we would rely a lot on primary sources for 
getting the basic description of the case, right? What the case is all about. So primary sources would be a valuable resource. Uh, however, when we are doing a literature review, before we get into the analysis of a case, uh, we would look at also secondary sources. We would look at um, highly vetted sources such mm -hmm. as journal articles, university press books. Uh, so that would be the literature review for any study should be based on a peer-reviewed journal articles and university press books and other books that go through that peer review process. Right. But uh, <coughs> if you are doing case studies, speeches, uh, communications from government departments, uh, then um, definitely uh, all kinds of, if there's a treaty involved, uh, text, direct text of treaties, texts of legislations, uh, lots of interview data, those are all important. So it actually depends on the kind of study that you are doing. So you would say it's it's important to go into international relations knowing how to do primary research as well yes. as secondary research. Yes, both primary research and secondary research is critical. It, it ultimately depends on the kind of project or the question that you are wanting to answer in your research, but both are extremely valuable skills uh, that uh, students of international relations should know. Good. I'm glad we teach it in writing. We well do, but yes. What advice would you have for a student looking to improve her writing in your discipline? Well, the first thing is to pay attention to your audience, to pay attention to the context and your purpose. So before you are writing any piece of uh, writing, be it if you are posting a tweet, a, a tweet about any political development, or if you are writing on Facebook, or you are writing your, a paper for your class, pay attention to who your audience is, pay attention to what your purpose is, and pay attention to what your context is. So that is key. Second is uh, when you are making a statement, make sure you have evidence to back it up, right? And uh, be sure to show what you're telling. So without that, uh, it is problematic uh, to, to be persuasive, to be compelling. And the third thing is, regardless of what information you are consuming, think critically about it. And from basic uh, questions like, is this piece of news credible? Distinguishing fact from opinion, distinguishes credible news from news that is fake. We are living in the age of uh, information overload and not every piece of information is equally uh, Reliable. Value. Reliable, yes. So to be able to make that distinction between what is valid information and what is not, to critically think about the inf in information. Why was this information written? Was it written for informational purposes? Was it written with some kind of hidden agenda? Mm -hmm. And all those skills help you come up mm -hmm. with uh, information that is that you yourself can evaluate before you utilize it in your own work. I, I want to ask you more about that. How would you suggest somebody determine whether a source is credible or not? Well, uh, in order to, there are multiple things that you can do uh, when you are consuming a piece of information. First, look at where it was published. What is the reputation of that source? When was it published? Uh, all the claims made in the article, are they backed up with evidence? Uh, who wrote it? What are their credentials? So looking at those things can give you some, some basic idea about whether it's a credible piece of information or not before you the, utilize it in your work. The who, what, when, where, and yeah, why questions. Yeah, are, yeah, are, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I always yeah, suggest my yeah, students yeah, to do. Yeah, Especially yeah. who, right? Yes, who, who's, who, who's writing this? Who is writing it and where are they writing it? Mm -hmm. So, um, I often talk about how news is covered in cable TV in the United States. So, for the same incident, the coverage that you receive from MSNBC will be completely different from what you receive at Fox News. So it's important to know 
who is covering it and why are they giving that spin and to know about the agenda of uh, the one who is presenting the news and then make your own decision about how much of it is opinion and how much it is uh, fact. So I think um, media literacy is key to developing good communication skills and to develop uh, writing skills uh, that are going to make an impression, a positive impression on the audience. And I think this brings in civic responsibilities too. You should be responsible for the kind of information that you are putting out, be it on your Facebook page or in your paper. In this age of misinformation, it is absolutely important for us to check, uh, fact check what we are sharing. I agree. Yeah. Well, this has been very uh, enlightening for me and hopefully for you too. Yeah. Dr. Roy, thank, thank you very you, much for being very here much. today. Thank you. And I hope you all have enjoyed the first episode of Writing Across Cotty. There'll be many more to come. We'll be talking to faculty across the disciplines and the interviews will very much look like this. You know, we're just trying to get an idea of what the faculty think about writing in their disciplines, how writing's used, what specific writing skills are used all in an effort to demonstrate that writing really is done across the curriculum. So until next time, I'm Dr. Green. Take care.